what you are about to see in this video is the complete journey of designing a two-stage operational amplifier in 180 nanometers CMOS technology. From breaking down each block and carefully choosing transistor W2L ratios, to running AC simulations and revealing the gain and phase response, and finally witnessing the results come alive on a screen. Don't miss this one. This is the schematic of the two-stage op-amp. To design this two-stage op-amp, first you need to place an ideal source here. I've set its current to 40 microamperes. More current means more slew rate. Less current means less slew rate. So you need to set its value according to your needs. But you must consider that if you are increasing your slew rate, you are losing gain. This M3 transistor is an NMOS transistor. Its width is set to 6 micrometers and its length is set to 500 nanometers. It is used in mirror current configuration with this M0 transistor which is responsible for the tail current of this differential pair. The M0 transistor width is set to 6 micrometers and its length is set to 500 nanometers so the current that flows through these two transistors are the same and the W2L ratio of these transistors are 12. This is one of the most important part of our schematic. M1 transistor and M2 transistor are the input transistors. So the input is given to the gates of these transistors in differential manner. Their width is 6 micrometers and their length is set to 500 nanometers. Their bodies are connected to VSS and their W2L ratio is set to 12. They are responsible for the bandwidth of the operational amplifier. More W2L ratios means more bandwidth and less W2L ratios means less bandwidth. So you need to set their W2L ratios according to your needs. These M5 and M6 transistor are the active loads for our differential pairs and they are set in the mirror current configuration as you can see here. Their width is set to 7 micrometers and their length is set to 500 nanometers. So their W2L ratio is 14. And here is the second stage of our two stage operational amplifier. This M7 transistor is set in a common source configuration. Its width is set to 87 micrometers and its length is set to 500 nanometers. For future improvements, it's a good idea to use fingers for this transistor because it has a large width. So to be able to use the chip area in the most efficient way, it's a good idea to use fingers for large transistors. Here is the Miller capacitor which is used for compensation. It improves the stability of the operational amplifier. The capacitance of this capacitor is set to 800 femtofarads. This value is chosen in a way that provides a stability of 60 degrees and drive capacitive loads of 2 picofarads. That's why its capacitance is set to 800 femtofarads. This M4 transistor is the active load for this M7 transistor. Its width is set to 38 micrometers and its length is set to 500 nanometers. Its gate is connected to this knot here and I've connected the gate of this transistor to knot here with uh, net names techniques in order to avoid nasty wiring. After completing the schematic, 
I set pins for this operational amplifier. I connected VDD to here, VSS here, differential pair inputs to the gates of M1 and M2 transistor. This is our positive input and this is our negative input. And the output is taken from here. Then I created a symbol of this schematic. You can do it through create cell view from cell view. Then I opened another schematic and I placed the op amps symbol here. I used two DC voltage sources in order to create the VDD and VSS. I set the voltage of this VDC, which is a DC voltage source, to 1.8 volts. And I set the voltage of this one to zero. That's because I didn't want to connect my system directly to GND, which is a global net. And I used VSS and VDD. Then I connected the VDD of the operational amplifier to VDD and its VSS to this VSS. Then I placed another DC voltage here and I set its DC voltage to 800 millivolts. That's because to provide the proper DC operating point for the transistors of the operational amplifier. Then I placed a sinusoidal voltage source here and I set its AC magnitude to 1 millivolt. I connected the positive input of the operational amplifier to the knot here and its negative input to this knot here. Then I created a pin in order to indicate the output of this operational amplifier. Now our system is ready to be simulated and tested. To do that, you need to head to launch, analog design environment launch. You need to choose the analysis. I select AC. The sweep variable is frequency. I set the start to 100 hertz and a stop to 100 megahertz. And our simulation is ready to be done. So press OK, then run it. So the simulation is done successfully. To see the results, head to the results, direct plot, AC gain and phase, click, click, and here you can see the bot diagram of our operational amplifier. Let me set this style of this diagram to solid. I set the width to thick. I do the same for the phase diagram. As you can see, this is the magnitude diagram of our operational amplifier. And this line indicates values in decibel. You can see it in low frequencies. Our magnitude is our gain is around 69 decibels. You can see that. And the phase is close to zero degrees and it's acceptable and it is considered good. This is the gain plot and this is the phase plot. And you can see our operational amplifier works just fine. If you enjoyed watching this video and you found this content helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more electronics content. Good luck.